Welcome to Geo Interesting, presented by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. In honor of Women's Equality Day, NGA Deputy Director Sue Gordon and NGA Director of Operations, U.S. Air Force Major General Linda U.V. Lutia Varhal, discuss their experiences and perspectives as NGA senior leaders and intelligence community employees. Ms. Gordon's IC career spans more than 25 years, and General U.V. has served in the Air Force for nearly 33 years. Stay tuned for Geo Interesting. Good morning, ladies. What inspired you to pursue a career in national security? So for me, um, uh, it was what my family did. Um, My grandfather, my father, my brother, um, they were all in the military, but but public service, national service um, is what, is who I am. It's who they are and kind of passed it on to me. Um, I actually made the choice twice. Uh, When I started, I would say that that was it. Um, after I left and I came back, um, it was more of a personal choice of who I am now. Um, and I found that I love the sense of purpose. I love the feeling of carrying the weight of responsibility. <laughs> and quite frankly, I love being the decision maker. No, what you? Uh, I came from a small town in Pueblo, Colorado, and none of my family was in national security. My, some of my uncles were, were drafted. But when I was 13, I went up to the Air Force Academy, and I saw him march, and I actually told my uncle that uh, one day I would graduate from, from the school. And uh, he looked at me and said, oh, but they don't let women uh, attend the Air Force Academy. And I said, well, just watch me. And sure enough, uh, about 11, about 10 years later, I was... Uh, Fifth class of women, 1985, and joined it. And I tell you, the opportunities have been presented. I've joined the Air Force so my family could see the world. Um, I've never looked back. Before I knew it, I was already at 20, and even now I'm already at 30 years, and I, I can't get enough of it. I just I just love it and what I get to do for my country. Wonderful. I love that. Just watch me. That kind of epitomizes who me. you – Yeah, kind of epitomizes who you were – um, over at the Pentagon, your last job, and it epitomizes your first, how many months here? Just a month. Yeah, your first month here. Just watch me. But I thought yeah, it was so it. cool, because I, I even forgot about it, and when I graduated, he, he reminded me I said that almost 10 years ago, which yeah. I didn't even remember. Is there any one particular experience that you look back on as a defining moment in your career, either of you, or in your life? Uh so many because I've had a career of a bunch of distinct careers that have added up to my career. I um, I think I think for me it was uh, early on in my career I was a GS10. So is that a band two? GS10 a band two? Um, and I had left uh, technical analysis and I went over. Um, and I was uh, part of the building collection systems. And I was given $50 million to, and kind of a blank slit piece of paper to come up with a new concept um, for a collection system that had a $3 billion price tag, and they said come up with something that's cheaper than that. And that was pretty seminal because I was young and it was big. Um, but the best part is, is um, it turned out okay, but in the midst of it I had a massive failure. Um, that taught me everything about how much you need to know to be good, how much uh, the technical solution is at the whole part of the game. And the best part is when I just really messed it up and I told my boss, my boss said, eh, I've seen worse. And so if I think about that event, it both informed how hard I learned to work and how good a leader I want to be so that anyone underneath me can go, Anything bad can happen. Like I say, ah, I've seen this. We can get, we can get out of this. Very nice. No? Well, and I had a couple. Uh, I had a couple. I've always said since my, I started here was to move an organization forward. You have to be uncomfortable. Uh, one of the uncomfortable positions that the Air Force put me in was they put me as a base commander. I've been intel my whole thirty years, and I was a base commander. So instead of looking at JWICs, I'm looking at. Uh, a fire response team, or I own the golf course, or even, you know, the the commander's toilet doesn't work. So it was those type of things that, that I got to do. It made me very, very uncomfortable, but I'll tell you, it was one of the very, it really forced me to look outside of my career and just use the management and leadership techniques that I had, I had been taught. 
The other one was having the great opportunity to work for Director Clapper for almost three years, once as, when he was USDI, and then I moved over with him and helped him work with his confirmation. The world that he showed me, he taught me to be comfortable in any environment, uh, the way that he handles himself, the, the world leaders I got to meet, he just showed me a world that I don't think I've ever would have uh, even had a chance to be part of if I wouldn't have been with him. And he was just a, a, a great a great leader for me to get to work with him and learn his skills for the last three years. Is there a particular woman who stands out in your mind as a trailblazer for other women or one to particularly set the bar for you? General UV. <laughs> and mine is Sue Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to tell you, the reason I came here was because Sue Gordon. When I was a deputy at the Air Force, um, I was not happy with the relationship we had between the Air Force and NGA. One of the things that we did as soon as Ms. Gordon came in was to work with her as a deputy, as I was deputy Air Force. And the things we managed to do in the last three years was just totally amazing, including getting OPIR data to, to, to NASIC. And then when this opportunity came up, I specifically called Robert and said, I want to come here and work. I want to work with your team, and I want to work with Sue Gordon. How has that experience been? It's been great. It is, is everything I expected and more. So I was I was not really being as glib as I, I sounded, and I, I think if you just look over the course of, of my career, there have been women throughout. Um, some I got along with, some I didn't, some Stephanie O'Sullivan, who I saw when she was junior and we knew what greatness she had, and now I get a chance to watch her lead. Um, what characterized it is, those relationships are a lot of what UV said about what she was looking for. Someone you can pick up the phone and talk to. Someone that you can, um, I'll say fight with, but fight for good purpose and know that it's going to be okay. Um, I, I've just had a whole slew of, of women leaders. But I will tell you, as many women leaders who have inspired me, I could cite a bunch of male leaders who allow, who either taught me or allowed me or encouraged me to, in the cliche, let my light shine. I've had, and, and Robert is one of those. Um, Earlier in my career, a guy named Jim Parson, who just um, let me go as far as I could go. And so, while there are lots of, of women, and I feel a great affinity for them because of, of the trail they blaze, I would say that there are just as many men who wanted me to be everything that I could be and encourage that and allow it. Thanks. What steps is NGA taking now to be more diverse and inclusive with its future workforce? So I'll start um, because I've been here longer. Uh, so I think it starts with um, being really clear and really forthright about the future we see. Um, and trying to reach to every human in the agency um, so that they can latch on to that vision, contribute to the vision, um, and then bring their whole selves. A little bit what I was saying in the last one. Um, we have uh, some really amazing programs. One of my favorite things that we do is for the specific employee research groups and on celebrating holidays, um, we really don't leave it just to ODE, but it's a KC who sponsors that, and it tends to take on a flavor. Um, but to me, and there are the things that we need to do organizationally when we get feedback and surveys to make sure that we have no micro biases that would ever cause us to be a place that would not be attractive to anyone with talent and desire and not be a place where people are fulfilled if they put the energy effort in. So to me, what we're mostly doing, um, and we have a distance to go, is to make sure that we have a compelling vision that's accessible to everybody and depends on everyone's uh, excellence and differences. One of the things I've noticed uh, in my past month is, you know, you have to have the right people, and what I mean by the right people, whether it be a woman, whether it be Asian American, whether it be Hispanic, whether it be African American, in mid-level and senior levels, because the junior levels will identify with that. If they see somebody of their same type that is in a senior position, that is a middle man 
manager position, it doesn't seem out of reach. And I think that NGA has done a very, very good job now, both at the senior level and the mid-level, because that's who the millenniums and that's our new workforce look up to them and say, well, they've broken the ground so that I can so that I can follow. The other piece, too, that's important is as we get our younger folks in, you know, people call us the trailblazers. They're as much trailblazer mm -hmm. as we are because it's still not quite the – we should um, reflect America's population, and we don't, and then I see overall, and we need to work harder that one. So even our folks that come in today that, uh, you know, Robert's going to go ahead and swear people in, I think, uh, as we speak now, they are also trailblazers, and I think if they can embrace that and understand for the folks that come behind them that they need to pay it forward, I think that's a, that's a good thing to teach. And I think just to, to riff on a couple things further, because I think this is, this is the topic uh, for our success. Um, one is why the marketplace um, is so important is you need to keep working so that you aren't making systemic choices that have a latent bias in them, right? If you aren't making opportunities obvious to everybody, if you aren't ensuring that your assessment of people's capability is not biased by the experience of the person who preceded them, you're going to get better. Um, and the second thing is why this is so important and why um, uh, UVs talk about getting leaders um, with all different faces and backgrounds into the mid-level is there is not one face of excellence. And the more diversity you have in your leadership, it really does lift all boats. Everyone will see. I will tell you, not every man has the same approach to leadership. But if we only have one style, people will self-select out. So to me, bringing diversity into leadership, not only showing people that it's possible for them, it shows everybody that excellence doesn't have a particular look to it. Very good. So what advice would you offer to uh, a woman considering a career in the intelligence community? First of all, it's a great time to join the intelligence community. We don't see gender. We don't see diversity. We need all types from all, all weight, walks of life to, to how they think to, to uh, be a, an analyst. And the opportunities are just fantastic uh, to to join. That's what I, that's what I would say. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd say do it. Um, just, it's, it, it's such a dynamic, complex, fascinating world where the answers aren't known, so you get to be a part of trying to divide it. Um, and the second thing I'd say is, remember, even if you join a particular agency, the point is not that agency. The point is, the combination of what we each bring uh, to advance national security. And never has it been more possible to achieve the kind of integration that the problems demand. So the second thing I'd say is join. But understand that your career isn't going to be just in the confines of your agency or just in the craft, because the point is what we're doing as a collective. And the opportunity is certainly there to do that. For Intel, it's ever ever evolving. I mean, the the stuff that our analysts look at today, it's it's what I call a mosaic. Where I came in, we were looking at a puzzle piece, mm -hmm. and a puzzle had a specific placement went in the in the overall puzzle. Now it's a mosaic. So I'm asking them to look at Russia. I'm asking them to look at China. I'm talking about the Zika virus. I'm talking about the Russian Olympics. I mean the uh, Rio Olympics. So you have five or six things that we're asking our analysts to look at at the same time, which to me is a different way of thinking. And, and every day I come to work, it's an adventure because I never know what's going to be at the Ops Intel, at Ops Intel meeting. So it's just a fascinating, exciting world to be in that's never boring. So I've been here 36 years, never been bored. I mean, in, in the IC, 36 years, never bored a day. Um, also, oh, one last piece, because you uh, prompted me to, with your discussion to say this. Um, another uh, outstanding woman here, Karen Hayes-Ryan, who's our uh, CAE, um, she shared an article that I think is really important for everyone, and that is fall in love with your problem, not your solution. Right, and I think that's just really great advice, especially now. Um, it's a world of expertise, but just 
staying narrowly focused on what you're doing without picking your head up is is not the way that we're going to most succeed. So follow up with the problem, not the solution, you're going to be okay. Great advice. Is there anything you'd like to add, either of you? Um, I, I cannot imagine a better moment to be in NGA. I, I just, I just can't. Um, with all the things going in the world, what we bring can be of unique contribution. We are both uniquely, uh, provide unique intelligence and we provide a great framework for everyone else's. We have leadership that is um, expansive in its thinking, that is broad in its background. Um, and organizationally, we're aware of where we need to go and we're aware of the work we need to do to make sure that everyone is hooked in. So I think this is just a, a brilliant moment and a brilliant moment, moment to be a woman and be a part of it. You bet. And I would challenge the, the workforce, and it doesn't matter whether you're what gender or what diversity you are, but come forward with the ideas. We have some great, I'd like to think we have some great ideas up, upstairs at the, at the sixth floor, but that's not where the great ideas generate yeah. from. They generate from the person, person that this is second day at NGA or the people who have been here for 20 years of a better way to do business. And I encourage them to come part, to come forward with those ideas, those innovation things that, that we're not even aware of or that we may not have thought of to come forward and bring that. You'd be surprised how much for very little money that can change the whole yeah. mindset. That's what Sue was talking about. We're only 20 years old. We're a babe in the woods compared to DIA or CIA. So let's be forward. Let's try new things. Let's be innovative. Let's work with our millenniums to say, hey, how would you do things versus the way I did things 30 years ago? I mean, that's where it's just going to get exciting to where we could go. Thank you, ladies, very much. You bet. Geo Interesting is produced by NGA's Office of Corporate Communications. Never miss an episode by subscribing on iTunes and SoundCloud, following us on Twitter, and liking us on Facebook. Thank you for listening. <laughs>